بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دا کورس گلوبل کمیونیکیشن ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ود یو اے ٹاپک میک برائٹ رپورٹ میک برائٹ رپورٹ از آلسو نون ایز مینی وائسز ون ورڈ دس رپورٹ واز ریٹن بائی یونیسکو ان یونیسکو اسٹینڈس فار یونائٹیڈ نیشنز ایجوکیشنل سائنٹیفک اینڈ کلچرل آرگنائزیشنس وچ رپورٹس ٹو ایٹس انٹرنیشنل کمیشن فار دا اسٹڈی آف کمیونیکیشن پرابلمس بیسڈ این پیرس پیرس از اے سٹی این فرانس دا مین گول آف یونیسکو از ٹو این دا ورڈس پورٹی through collaboration and the exchange of scientific, cultural objects and education between nations. As of January 2019, the organization has 193 members and 11 associate members. Their tasks include analyze communication problems in modern societies. particularly relating to mass media and news consider the emergence of of new technologies and to suggest a kind of communication order which is the new world information and communication order to diminish these problems to further peace and human development among the problems The report identified were concentration of the media, commercializations of the media, and unequal access to information and communication. The Commission called for democratization of communication and strengthening of national media to avoid dependence on, on external sources, among others. Subsequently, internet-based technologies considered in the work of the Commission served as a means for furthering McBride's visions. In the 1970s and 80s, major changes in media and communication were happening thanks to the McBride report. They promoted policies. directed at the uh, liberalizations of the telecommunication market, monopoly powers as well as the comparative advantage or dominance of broadcasting and newspaper companies. Today, modern media technologies, particularly the internet and satellite communication, have become the infrastructure for that has made possible a new global market system and a new uh, constants for the for the spread of political economic and cultural ideas while the report had a strong international support it was condemned by the united states and the united kingdom as they considered that it's an attack on the freedom of the press and both countries withdraw from UNESCO and protest in its around about 1984 or 1985 and later rejoined in 2000, 2003. They both countries uh, later rejoined. So what does it mean by the McBride Commission? The International Commission for the Study of Communication Problems was uh, set up in 1977. by the director of UNESCO under his uh, suggestions by the USA delegations based in Paris France and has over 50 offices around the world it was agreed that the commissions would be chaired by by Sean McBride from Ireland and the representatives from 15 other countries and invited due to their roles in national and international communication activities 
and packed among media activists, journalists, scholars, and media executives. The Commission presented a report in October 1978 at the 20th Journal Conference of UNESCO in, of UNESCO in Paris. The Commission's seminal sessions on new technologies to address the identified problems was hosted by India in New Delhi in March 1979. Because of the controversy surrounding the report and the withdrawal of support by the UNESCO leaderships in 1980s for its ideas, the book went out of print and was difficult to obtain. A book on the history of the United States in UNESCO was even threatened with legal actions and forced to include a disclaimer that UNESCO was in no way involved with it. The McBride report was eventually uh, reprinted by, by Roman and Littlefield in the United States and is also freely available online. Let me discuss with you the limiting the power and control of dominant communication corporations. The reports call to develop and implement national information and communication policies, provided support for countries seeking to establish regulations that limited the power and control of dominant communication corporations. During the 1980s and 1990s, several nations restricted how much media content and advertising could be imported from, from other countries, limited the concentrations of media ownership, reserved broadcasting frequencies for public media, taxed commercial media to fund public media, and implemented policy incentives for non-traditional media producers. For example, Colombian law, the law is 42, it defined television as a public service that could be offered by commercial for profit entities and went on to establish a new framework in which civil society was responsible for shaping and regulating public and commercial television in Colombia. The McBride report also showed the global south-to-south -South communication was practically non-existence. Calling for a new world information and communication order, the report's recommendations included implementing media regulations in the form of national communication and information policies increasing south-to-south -south communication and information initiatives. The forces unleashed in response to the release of the McBride report should have been warming signs for what was yet to come. Using freedom of the press as a smoke screen to protect uh, transactional media corporations from regulatory policies that could restrict their operations, especially in the third world, the, in the United States. In the global south, development experts pressured third world governments to privatize their media industries in order to modernize their communication infrastructure, a risk being left behind by the so-called developed, globalized world. At the same time, during the 1980s, the International Monetary Fund, which is IMF, the World Bank, and the World Trade Organizations began pressuring countries with large foreign debts to adopt structural adjustment programs if they wanted more loans. Many countries in the developing world had accumulated enormous foreign debt in 1990. For example, Guatemala as a state, its, uh, the international debt was 
uh, equivalent to 35 percent of its GDP. U.S. Department of State, 1996. Central to a structural adjustment programs was the privatization of services, including media and communication. This meant dismantling information and communication policies. Naomi Klan asserts that this scheme of new liberal policies, privatizations, and deregulations, what she calls the Washington model, was imposed on Latin American countries, first by the military interventions and later through structural adjustment programs. The history of communication technologies is the history of tensions between the divergent forces that sometimes move towards regulations and social accountability and other times move toward autonomy and commercial freedom. The McBride report marks a point in the history during which these two opposing forces became for a brief moment visible, transparent and loud. Let me discuss with you the rising power of, tra of transnational communication corporations. In 1982, two years after the McBride Report's release, international media experts sees Hamlink, he noted that the report's failure to sound enough alarms, warming of the rising power of transnational communication corporations when he stated the proposed measures mainly legal in nature seem to me seem to me totally inadequate in confronting the vast po uh, political economics power exercised by those transnational corporations that play a key role and Hamling's words sound uh, prophetic today. Engaging uh, technologies communities in the conversations about social justice issues is among the main challenges for those of us working towards media democracy. Unless social justice and democratic values are considered from the moment of conceptions in design, communication technologies wouldn't address the needs of democratic and inclusive communities. Looking back at the McBride report now, after the advent of the web, some uh, sections appear idealistic and uh, over, gen uh, over generous in their pro announcements about the role of fractionless information transfers via computer networks. The report states that a constant flow of information is vital for economic life and that communication offers in, in uh, calculable uh, potentialities. Although the report was released well before widespread public access to the internet, the writers were able to articulate something analogous to it. The global, mm, global web of electronic networks can potentially perform a functional analogous to that of the nervous system. The reality is that after the growth of the commercial internet, and distributed web services. The power has become uh, consolidated in a small number of companies and places like Silicon Valley who control the information that is sent along this nervous system. An example of the concern raised by Hamelink. The above point is crucial for understanding the report in the light of the formations of the internet its technologies and the associated problems they introduced. Internet technologies are indeed not neutral 
are value free. Tools like algorithms may act as filters that short information according to a set of predefined rules. And while such rules are the, the product of decisions made by human developers, at some point along the coding life cycle, algorithms themselves have political significance. For example, the technology of choices of California based for profit social media companies, algorithms are the primary mechanism for sorting and ordering news feeds. In this context, algorithms are inherently political and value loaded owing to the nature of their composition and forecasting technical features. The report often seems to move back and forth about the utility of data technologies as noted by Scheller in, in 1982 who compares areas in the report that seem to describe an electronic utopia with sanctions that describe more sober structural realities related to data. The report does present significant concerns in the realm of advertising in the commercializations of communications, while in the global north Companies like Google and Facebook operate according to the market logic of the commercializations of data. Date countries in the global south have adopted similar logics for profit companies dominate targeted online advertising as the main capital accumulations strategy, online shops and online adword services are popular. Freemium services are combined with advertising. The report warns about the dangers of advertising and argues for uh, decommercialization the media. Yet the authors of the report perhaps could not have anticipated the intimate connections between data fac datafication and advertising, especially in the constant of the emerging internet and the web services that it would enable. The last point is datafication of surveillance capitalism. In the end, the McBride report post-internet legacy may finally be tied to its silence on the rapid growth of what could dry called the data uh, da da data colonialism and uh, surveillance capitalism a new economic order and claims the human experiences as free raw material for hidden commercial practices of ex uh, extractions predictions and sales. It may be time to revisit other critical interventions in the history of communication research. Several authors writing before, during or after the McBride commissions were, att were attentive to the dangerous of what we now may call surveillance capitalism. It is easy to review a historical document like the McBride report and criticize it for the things that it missed. But there is a utility in doing so, if only because it illuminates just how profoundly socio-political issues in communication can change without notice. If there is to be any uh, prescriptive or regulatory power that comes from documents like the report, it will be found in a preemptive attentiveness to the shifting landscape of communication problems in the modern societies. I think that's enough for today. 
thanks for watching my my lectures kindly subscribe my channel so that whenever i upload a new uh, new lecture in in coming future you will get in your notifications thank you once again and best of luck